Welcome my friends, I'm Jen Hillman and today I'm going to be showing you some head, neck and shoulder massage techniques. Now I have my dear friend Katarina Sutton here as my gracious massage model. You guys are definitely going to want to check out Katarina's links below. She is an amazing jeweler, expert wire wrapper and an incredible hula hoop dancer. So you can follow her links below and check out some of the amazing things that she is up to. And don't forget to like this video, leave your comments and questions below and subscribe to the new channel and grab a partner and let's get ready to dive into some of these relaxing techniques. Now I like to begin kneeling at my partner's head you could tack these techniques on to the end of a longer full body session or do these techniques all on their own as a 15 to 20 minute head, neck and shoulder massage. So wherever you are in this process, kneeling at the head of your partner, you could be sitting in a chair or a stool. I'm going to gently scoop my hands underneath her neck and begin a gentle traction pull. So because I'm not using a lot of oil right now, I have a really nice solid grip without having to squeeze or put too much pressure through my hands. And with that, I can extend my arms and just lean my weight back. So I'm actually leaning back off of my own center. But because I have this solid, stable grip, I can trust in her body weight to support me as I lean back. And what's great about this steady traction pull is that while it looks on the outside like you're not really doing much, this steady traction is giving a long, continuous stretch of all of the muscles and the fascia down the entire length of the spine. So your partner may feel this directly in the neck or between the shoulder blades, into the mid back, or sometimes all the way down into the low back if that's where the muscles are the most tight. So wherever your partner is tight along the spine, that's where they're gonna feel this stretch. And as you maintain the hold and just be patient and allow yourself to stay with it, things will start to open up little by little. And you may even start to feel just a subtle shift that you can lean back just a little bit more or you feel their spine lengthening just a little bit at a time. And so you could honestly hold this traction pull for a minute, two minutes or three minutes even, and it would be very deeply therapeutic. So never hesitate to hang out in a traction pull as long as you're not pulling on the little hairs behind the neck or putting too much pressure, you can really stay here and your partner can deeply relax into it. Now, as I start to make my way out of the traction pull, I wanna go slow and steady. I'm not gonna just pop back to neutral, okay? We wanna ease out of the stretch just the way we eased in. So I'm gonna start by shifting my weight back to my center so I can support myself. And then I'm slowly releasing the pressure behind my hands. And so you may be able to see that subtle recoil as her muscles return to their normal resting position. And from here, I'm just going to begin kneading alternatively from right to left and I'm just lightly squeezing the muscles along the back of the neck. So this is like upper trapezius, some of the erector muscles that line the right and left sides of the spine. And you can take this kneading 
motion all the way up into the base of the skull, into the occipital ridge. And this is an area that can get very, very tight, especially if people are dealing with headache tension or um, like sinus headaches. Working this occipital ridge along the base of the skull is a really key point for releasing chronic headaches, releasing uh, you know, sinus pressure that can actually get built up in the back of the head, and just stress in general can get carried at the top of the neck, base of the skull. So you can, again, just hook your fingers into that occipital ridge and gently lean back. But bear in mind that this is going to be a little more specific and directed pressure into the occipital muscles. So you just want to be gentle and mindful about how much pressure you're using because this can be a kind of sensitive area loaded with a lot of trigger points. You have some options there. Now I love to move into some neck stretching from this position. So if you scoop one hand underneath the neck, you can rotate the head towards that arm and you have just a nice little cradle. So I can actually cradle her head with this hand and I have some control over the di direction and angle of her head. Then I have this free hand that I will glide along the top of her shoulder. Now I'll press the shoulder down as I simultaneously use the hand behind the head to pull her head in the opposing direction. So we're creating a nice long diagonal neck stretch. Then you can adjust the placement of the hand that's on the shoulder using now I'm using more of the thumb, the joint at my thumb, to get a little into the soft tissue, not just pushing against the clavicle. So that will allow us to get a little deeper stretch. So you can play around with that. Play around with the placement of the hand as you just work that gentle stretch. And this is a great place as well, now that the head is rotated to one direction, that you can come in and do some scalp massage and it gives you a really nice access to the back of the head, which of course, if they're laying on their back, you wanna massage the scalp. It's kind of hard to massage the back of the head because they're laying on the back of their head. But if you roll the head to the side, then you can really work at the back of the scalp as well as you know, coming down with your fingertips, coming back into that occipital ridge. You can make some nice circles into those occipital attachments. And getting into some of that scalp massage, which is very relaxing, feels super nice. So you can take them into a deep neck stretch, really big juicy stretch, and then smooth it out with some feely good head massage. And then I'm going to slide my arm out of the way and then just let her head naturally fall to that same side. And I'm going to show you another stretch maneuver from this angle where I'll actually stand up. I'm going to bring one hand, my top hand, right into the occipitals then I'm bringing my opposing hand across the top of her shoulder. I'm going to push the shoulder down towards the table as I pull the occipitals towards myself. So again, you can play with this, slightly adjusting the placement of your hands. And bear in mind that even the slightest little adjustment can make a big difference in what your partner is feeling. Nice deep stretch there. And then I'll come back around to the top of the table and just gently roll her head back to center. And if you need to adjust to kind of get the head on straight, you can do that. Then we're gonna come along to the side of the table to start to work into the pec 
the chest and the shoulder. So coming along the side that you want to work. So we just worked her left side neck. So I'm going to come and work this left shoulder, keeping it all on one side at first. Giving just a little swing will help release any tension in the elbow and the shoulder. We're going to open the arm out to the side like a goal post or like a cactus arm. Then I'm going to bring my hand that's closest to her body right back into the top of the shoulder there and support her wrist with the opposite hand. Now I'm leaning my weight down and slightly off towards that left corner. So I'm really working on stretching out the pec muscles here. And then you can come all the way out onto the deltoid here, applying the same type of pressure down and slightly at the diagonal, stretching all those attachments along the pec and the top of the shoulder here. Then we can take it even deeper into the shoulder connection by working points along the inner arm. So I'm going to make a one, two, three pattern starting closest to the armpit, leaning down and slightly to the left, out to the side. Down and stretch. One, two, at a second location. And the third spot, I'll come just right above the elbow. Now this is gonna be my greatest leverage. So out at this distant point, I'm gonna have the deepest amount of pressure, the deepest stretch. <sighs> so it's a nice way to open up those chest muscles that can get very tight. Then this is one of my favorite maneuvers. I'm gonna take her hand so that I'm along the outside of her body. And I'm gonna take this, in this case, my right elbow and walk around to the front, scoop her un elbow under my elbow. Then I can guide her arm up over her head like so. So you can see we're arm in arm, hooked. Then I'm using my free hand to support the wrist and I'm going to lean back. So this is a wonderful stretch that's going to open up the lats there behind the shoulder blade as well as getting into the connective tissue of the shoulder joint itself. I'm giving it a good steady stretch. You can release the arm back down. Maybe give it another little wiggle. And release. Then we can come back up to the top of the head. So now we can repeat that cycle on the second side. And so you might want to ground back in with another little traction pull, just to kind of come back to center. You might also find it helpful to just depress the shoulders right to left a little bit. So you can just rock back and forth. And then we'll prepare to move on to the second side. Just like we did before, we're gonna scoop the hand underneath the neck. And then roll your partner's head into your arm. Just be mindful of what's happening with the ear. We don't wanna smash the ear too much. That doesn't feel very comfortable. So we just wanna be real gentle with the head as you roll it into your arm. And then you have this hand to help control the direction and angle of your partner's head. Then I'm coming with my free hand into the top of the shoulder. So I'm not quite on the top of the chest, but rather working across that top line of the neck there. You can start out by the shoulder, pressing down towards the feet and using the hand behind the head to gently rock her head in the opposing direction taking you into that stretch. And you can hit it two or three times, just 
lightly adjusting the placement of the shoulder hand. You guys got that? The shoulder hand? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I'm giving it a nice, good stretch in there. Mm -hmm. And then you can smooth it out with some real sweet scalp massage. Right, so those neck stretches can be kind of intense, especially if you're working with somebody that is having, you know, chronic neck pain or if they get chronic headaches. It can often be a result of the neck being really tight. So it can be a little intense getting those deep stretches, but you can smooth it out with some loving head massage and help lull them back into a state of relaxation. Then I'm gonna slide my arm out of the way, allowing her head to just gently fall to the side. And I'm gonna come around to the opposite side of where I'm working. So I can bring my top hand underneath the occipitals and my bottom hand that's closest to her feet is gonna come across the front of the chest. So I'm pressing her shoulder down towards the table as I use my top hand to guide her head around with my contact point there at the very base of the skull, giving it a nice twist rotation for three, two, one. We'll gently release that stretch. And I'll come back around to the top of her head Gently roll her head back to center. And then you can make any adjustments that you need to to help level it out. Then we can come around and work this shoulder and chest. So coming along to the side of the arm that you're going to work, you can open out the arm and if their arm is tight, the elbow is tight or the shoulder is tight, it won't really move because <laughs> people kind of lock their joints. They hold that tension, they want to do it themselves. But if you just give a little wiggle, like rocking the baby, it will send a little signal to their head that they can relax and start to let those muscles around the elbow and the shoulder go. Then opening this arm out like a goal post, we're going to start by working the pec. So I'm bringing the knife edge of my hand right into the soft part of the chest, leaning down and slightly towards the top corner of the table. So I'm really thinking about the lines of the muscle fibers and stretching those lengthwise, giving it a nice good stretch there. Then we can come all the way up onto the deltoid. Same idea. Pressing down and towards the corner. Think more about using this knife edge of your hand more than using the heel of your hand. That's going to give you more broad pressure. That's going to deliver a greater stretch as opposed to using the heel of your hand, which will go deep. Then we can start to work along the length of the inner arm continuing to stretch, lengthen, and open up the muscles and the attachments in the shoulder joint. So starting with my hand closest to the armpit, I'm leaning in and now my pressure is down and almost directly to the right. To her right, my left, off to the side. You get it. And then moving down to the midway point, this will be our point number two. Leaning in with a stretch. And we'll come out to point number three. Leaning down and out. So giving a nice good stretch. Okay, now we're going to do just a little fancy maneuver here. So I'm taking this hand was doing the work. Now it's gonna take the wrist. I'm gonna come around to the top of the table and use this hand that's now closest to her head is going to scoop under the elbow. 
and I can guide her elbow up alongside her head. Now I'm using this free hand down here to support at the wrist, otherwise I won't be able to get a good traction. So I need to support the wrist and hold the arm in place as I lean back, giving it a nice good stretch into the shoulder, slow and steady. And then slowly release. Remember, we want to go out of the stretch just as gently as we went into the stretch. You can guide the arm back down, wiggle it out a little, and just bring them back to a resting place. Then you can come back around to your partner's head and readjust as needed. If you like that maneuver, pressing alternatively shoulder to shoulder, you can also stand up and turning your fingers outwards, lightly resting across the outer part of the arm and shoulder. You can alternate right and left, stretching across the chest. So this is another great point that feels amazing. And another surprising compression you can do that you wouldn't think feels great, but it really, really does. You can come all the way down and stack your hands one over the other across the top of the sternum, right down the middle, and give a downward pressure towards the feet. So this actually helps to stretch some of the attachments around the collarbones and is a very grounding compression into the heart. So. It's a really, really nice maneuver, and it's a great way to kind of close out your session. So you can just give it a good steady hold and slide your hands out. If you want to finish with any additional scalp massage, I'm sure nobody's going to be mad about that. You can always you know, tack on a couple of minutes if you are finishing your massage time, but you've got a little time left. You can always spend time massaging the scalp and it's so relaxing, feels so, so yummy and good. And it's a great way to finish after, you know, just an isolated neck and shoulder treatment or a full body massage. And once you feel complete, you can gently place your hands on your partner's head to just seal off the energy. Take a deep breath. Give your thanks, give your gratitude, give your love. And when you feel complete, you can gently remove your hands and create that separation. Thanks so much for following along with me today. I hope that you've learned some new things and some easy techniques that you can start to employ, even if you're not a massage therapist. Remember to use your intuition, trust your hands, don't overthink it. Thanks so much for watching. Sending you guys lots of love and many hugs, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Namaste. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you've been enjoying these new videos and that you've had a chance to subscribe to the new channel. Now, I am so excited about the year ahead and I have an incredible new program I can't wait to share with you. If you have been struggling with chronic or reoccurring pain for the last year, two years, or even more, or if you've seen all the doctors but nobody seems to be able to really find a problem, or if you've gotten onto expensive prescription medications that seem to be causing more problems than they're solving, then you are going to love my all new pain-free lifestyle revolution. And as a gift for the new year, I am now offering my one-on-one -on -one wellness overview strategy session, normally valued at $500, as a complimentary gift from me to you. Now my time is limited, so I will not be able to schedule a call with every single person, but if you go ahead and click the link below 
you can fill out a quick survey that will determine if you qualify to receive this free gift and find out if the new pain-free lifestyle revolution is right for you. So if you are sick and tired of the runaround, if you are tired of being held back by the pain in your life, if you are ready to take the next step to truly overcoming your pain, don't wait. Click the link below and schedule your strategy session with me today.